21 minutes to nine. If you've been the victim of fraud and you call the police action fraud line, you'd expect to be dealt with by people who've been trained to help you. Instead, according to an investigation carried out by the Times newspaper, the call handlers have been trained to mislead people into thinking their cases will be investigated when most are never looked at again. Their undercover reporter, Paul Morgan Bentley, is in the studio with me. So is Commander Karen Baxter, the National Lead for Economic Crime at the City of London Police who oversee action fraud. And Paul, what sort of things did you see and how did you gain access? Well, the reason we went undercover at first at Action Fraud is we just kept seeing articles in other papers, in our own paper, from victims who were saying that they'd reported their very serious cases to Action Fraud and then they'd been abandoned with no explanation. Um, We also saw some kind of comments from former employees online talking about how the service was being, in their opinion, mismanaged. So I applied for a job there and um, got the job. And what we found was that There was a culture of mocking victims, of misleading victims, uh, suggesting that their cases would be investigated when they knew they wouldn't because they were screening them. them. Yes, the managers there were mocking victims as morons, joking about them, talking about some. a, A lot of the victims that call action fraud are very vulnerable. They would refer to them as psychos, as screwballs. Um, and obviously that really shocked me because you go into a call centre that's supposed to be helping victims of crime um, and this is the language that scammers use. You sh- could have just gone in on a bad day, maybe. Well, you could say that if this was just a couple of you know junior members of staff, these the people making these comments were the managers. So, for instance, most of, if you go onto the Times, you'll see our full footage. Most of the footage is of the trainer who is in the, he's hired by Concentrix, the outsourced provider to train every new employee that comes into work in the call centre. These are Syrian uh, senior members of staff at Action Fraud. Commander Baxter, uh, this sounds disgraceful. John, it is disgraceful because the first thing I'd like to say is let me apologise to victims and the public for having witnessed this footage. Um, I'm angry about it and it is entirely unacceptable and will not be tolerated in any way. As soon as I was informed of this footage um, and of this information from Paul. I have very robustly had um, a number of meetings with Concentrix, our service providers, and they have commenced urgently an investigation and currently there are a number of staff subject to that investigation and there are a number of staff suspended. I think that is entirely appropriate. Wouldn't it have been more appropriate to sack Concentrix? I think the first thing is that there is a degree of due diligence to be applied in this. But what I would like to reassure you is that when I look at this contract, when I look at the work, when I look at the standards going forward, all of those things will be scrutinised. I agree with Paul. When victims of fraud phone action, when, when victims of fraud and economic crime phone action fraud, I expect them to be dealt with empathetically and that they are supported. Now, I think there is this is not endemic, and I would disagree with Paul that I know that Paul was there. I think you you were there, Paul, for six days, and you were on the floor for perhaps one day. Um, I am told, and I am assured this morning that that is it is not endemic. However, he is right that there is one member of staff who is in a managerial role. That is not acceptable and it will not be tolerated. And he'll be forward. fired. I can't say that at the moment because there, that is a matter for Concentrix, the service provider. But what I can say is that that behaviour has no place in action fraud. It falls well below the standards of policing and well below the standards of the City of London. But, but, but the reason I say he'll be fired, uh, if he is not fired, I assume it's a he, by the way, it is, uh, then Concentrix... I shouldn't be running the, the, do, I can carrying out you, this job. I can they? assure you, John, and I, I'm conscious that we cannot talk about individual cases. No, we've not named That behaviour um, and individuals who show that behaviour in action fraud and in that call centre, particularly in a managerial, managerial role, have no place in action fraud as we see it but today. So I, w- I will be doing a really stringent review around the standards. The one thing I would say is that actually Paul has done something for us that I perhaps could not have done in ways with the resources and, 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 well, and the delivery of the Well, going to be service. my question, why didn't the police find out themselves what was going so, on? So actually, we had this discussion right before we came into this. I think there's a number of things that when you apply standard systems of audits, we are always aware that it's like being on a good day at school. Um, so what Paul has done this morning and, and over the last few months is that in going in there undercover, it has provided what is effectively the secret shopper. 
So for that, I will take that information. We will scrutinise that and we will look at improving standards for the future. But it goes beyond that, doesn't it? Professor David Cantor, one of the country's foremost criminal psychologists, he found action fraud to be completely useless. He'd had £18,000 stolen by scammers. While he was trying to reclaim the money, he discovered the UK bank account details of the fraudsters, tried to report them to action fraud. He was told by them they didn't want the information. His case would not be passed on to police. So There's I'm, something rotten at the core of this, isn't there? So what I would say, John, is I'm not going to discuss individual cases. What we have in terms of fraud is that we have over 900,000 contacts in regard to fraud come into action fraud every single year. Every single year, 300,000 of those, just under 300,000 of those end up being crimes. This is the, one of the fastest growing crime types that is affecting the United Kingdom. And what we need to do, not just in policing, not just in, in, in action fraud, but right across society is decide how do we take this forward? We conduct an, an enormous amount of business with partners, with the National Economic Crime Centre, with, with business and banking. And, and what that is, is about trying to prevent it happening in the first place. We prevented £94 million of fraud last year with one of our units in the City of London. And I think that's where we need to get to. But it is unacceptable and I will not tolerate it going forward. Commander Baxter and Paul Morgan Bentley, thank you both very much in that story in The Times this morning.